turn two kills, some turn three kills also. And it's, you know, like whenever it can interact with Thrawn, it just gets ahead so easily. But on the other hand, uh, Thrawn is actually like very well positioned to win the long game. Like if the Hammer player doesn't end the game fast, they have no tools to answer things like the One Ring or Karn the Creator, you know. And, you know, the top end of Thrawn is just too strong for, for Hammer to handle. So I will say the first three turns are critical to the game development, especially from the Hammer side. Because Tron side, usually the beginning, you just play Tron lands. As you can see in the screen now, right? We have a you know tower, yes. mine, map. That's it. And we'll see. Uh, the the the, gli the light is a little bit bad on the left of the table, but I think that is uh, Esper Sentinel. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, in the okay, the Hammers players need to be so fast, and uh, Tron uh, need and Tron need to survive in the early game. And uh, them have a sweet spot in the mid and uh, late game. Three lives to to um, is uh, is Pierre playing? No, Claudio playing this hammer. Yeah, it's Pierre playing this hammer. It's Pierre playing the, the, the hammer, right? The yeah. hammer, so right? Yeah. Usually, hammer deck wants to go for hammer kills. Like you know, hammer is plus ten plus ten. It's huge. But this time, the hand is rather weak, and he just went for the Stoneforge Mystic plus color complete start. Uh, this has some upside, so like it's slower than the hammer uh, hands, but at least this is better against Karn Greek Creator a little bit. Like you know, like once you develop this, it's also better against Oblivion Stone, but definitely not where the hammer player wants to be at, but still acceptable, especially if you're in the play, which is the case now. Well, the hammer players is playing hammer, the big, the big equipment. That's fifteen. Now big turn, right? Like this is what we're gonna see. I mean, the game will literally end if the Tron player doesn't do anything. Uh, but now we're going to see Tron player being like seven mana, and that's where they can, you know, play the big haymakers, like, you know, like the well, Mila Mox and such. The Tron player is is, uh, is with the tower, is ha have Tron the next turn. This is a huge mana, a lot of mana to play in uh, very good spells. Yeah, most notably, like, they, they also, I mean, not only map, but um, but they can also play like something, I mean, I don't know, the Karn, this member is not enough anymore, though. So there's actually not that many outs for. Yes, this member disappeared of the Tron decks. Yeah, well, some there. It could be a three. I played three before. Some players gonna play two. Some players gonna play you know one. But well, have a scoop here. Uh, scoop means no one ring or no Karn. Those were the only two cards he could have to, to get out of this, which is which is gonna be usually the case actually. Like you know, you need the ring to survive to to hammer. Well, boy, uh, this is so fast. That's the fast. <laughs> <laughs> the first uh, game was over. Let's go to the second game. Let's go to the very important uh, moment of the game. The sideboard, the sideboard time, the sideboard planning. Okay, uh, talk me, Javier, about the sideboard. What cards need Tron to put in the deck to make uh, against the hammer deck? Well, the best one is Force of Vigor. Which is someone we're gonna see in this matchup actually, uh, by Claudio. Uh, usually, a lot of Tron decks cannot afford that card, but here we're gonna s we're gonna see if that's good enough to you know to be able to to break the stars. The thing is, if you're playing Tron, you're definitely light on light on removals, right? So we um, that that's hard to interact with the, the Hammer deck. But I think if Tron has one piece of interaction, one removal to cut the tr the clock from um, from Hammer, imagine that game. If um, Claudio answers to the hammer with his member on the on the Caldra card, then it's like three more turns to live, to live, right? That's just game breaking. So I expect hammer to be ahead. The player in the play is obviously very, you know, advantage as well. But I think one piece of interaction is enough to actually change. So between that removal spells and Tromming on the play post cyber, I think it might be better for for Tron game two. Even though then Tron has to win game three and the draw though. But I think hammer usually doesn't get better. Plus Cyber and Strong. Like they don't have that many cards anyway. Okay. So the Tron players need a bit inter interaction with the cards of the opponent to win this game. And so let uh, them play bigger spells like uh, Karn or another of the toolbox uh, on the on the sideboard because the Tron is a toolbox deck. Yeah, it's a toolbox deck with Karn, which presumably means you don't have access to the sideboard as much. But reality, in reality, though, you actually have some... Like, 
just because a card is on the cyber for card doesn't mean it cannot be cyborged in, you know? Like, that's something, a misconception you often see in players, like, they're like, well, you don't cyborg with this deck, with Throne or with Morrowind Devotion in, in Pioneer or whatever. But, like, um, it's, uh, you know, it's just like, you can still cyborg those cards. You have to be careful because it's a bad feeling when you go Karn, get a card, and you cyborg it in. Whoa. So you cannot get it. Give right? me the car. <laughs> yeah, you're like not me, but you have to be careful, right? So ideally, you want to cyber in the cars that are not the best. Like you yeah. get the best cars you get from Karn, but once you have that covered, those cars are fine, but you almost never get. Those are the ones you want to cyber in, and I think you're gonna see this in in the Tron games along the day. And yeah, I mean, I think players are ready to go. By the way, I think the the game is the one with um, Kamer, right? We have the cars yeah. here, so he's one up against Claudio. And, and yeah, I mean, we're gonna see the cyborg dynamic, but I expect Tron to be. I will say Tron is ahead for cyborg on the play if they have interaction. Cool. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we, yeah, we'll we see. Now the Tron is uh, on the play, very interesting position in the in the round. Well, Tad, remember we are in the first round. We have nine rounds of modern today with a new meta, with a fresh meta, without uh, Ragdos Evoke. Bye bye, Fury. Bye bye, Fury. <laughs> but that <laughs> one was kind of unexpected, but bye bye, Abdominstock was unexpected. It's like an uncommon for draft from the new, new set, you know, and it just got banned. <laughs> All right, we're going to Mulligans now. So, this is kind of one kind of the matchups. I feel like the Mulligans is the early game. Like, the early game is not actually the first turns, it's like turn zero. Like, this is the early game because. These are two decks that are gonna mulligan a lot, and rightfully so. You see both players mulligan now, and don't think necessarily they got like zero lands or seven lands. No, like these two players, they are aware they need very good hands to actually beat the opponent's hands if they're good. So they're gonna mulligan medium hands, like you know, hands that go don't get drawn or hands that don't kill fast in hammer. So this is actually the early game in that way. Right? It's a different conception from decks like like. Slow decks or limited games where the early games are the first turns. I think the early game here is this, and we're going to see a lot of mulliganing, I think. Amazing. Well, we are waiting for the players. Is uh, shuffle the, shuff, uh, shuffling the decks very important? Sh shuff, shuffle your deck very well. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? You, I know why are you laughing. It's, 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 a, good, it's a good advice. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. <laughs> and also, mulligan bad hands. That would be my <laughs> advice, you know, even though. Yeah. Super advice yeah. them. <laughs> okay. We'll see. They play both players take, six. Take that tip. So actually, uh, one interesting thing about this is both players mulliganing actually benefits Thrawn a little bit more, I think, than Hammer. Why? Because I think Hammer is a little bit worse in terms of like when it doesn't have resources. You know, like it needs a little bit more resources than Thrawn. But I'm not sure that's entirely true, but it is true if the player interacts and it's the one not interacting. Like if Tron keeps three car cards and it's a Tron, natural Tron, and Hammer keeps like a land Hammer, as you got to say, they still need, I don't know, I think it's a little bit worse because they, they will be slower. But it's not a very big difference. But if I was forced to be on four cards, uh, I feel like, you know, I would rather be in the Tron side even in the draw. Well, the second game of the first round is running. The players are thinking about the hands. I think we can see a little bit of the hammer hand and the Tron also. So we yes. just two Tron lands. They're the same Tron lands. And it was two forward. towers. Yeah. So we just, you know, like two, to two Tron, two towers, nothing else. Uh, Claudio going to five. And another Mulligan for Claudio Martino. Yeah. I mm. think Pierre is thinking about it. I think it has two, three lands, Stoneforge Mystic. I don't see the other cards. He seems to be thinking. Is it the needle? He goes to. Yeah, it seems like it was three lands, Needle, Mystic, and two other cards who were not combo cards, and he goes to five as well. And then again, that, that seemed like a functional hand, right? He was thinking like, all right, if my hand is fine, I can go to turn, turn to Mystic, turn three color complete. But he is aware that if Claudio keeps a, you know, a decent five where he has like turn three ring or Karn, this is not good. So he likes also to go to five. You, you'll see both players are five, but that's part of the <laughs> early game. I mean, we can still see turn three kills, you know, turn three log game. Like, we still see a lot of, we can still see fast draws, but also slow. You know, that when you mulligan a lot, the, the possibility is open because now you're forced sometimes to keep like medium hands, but also both players. That's something that happens in matchups like this, right? Where both players mulligan a lot and they eventually end keeping 
four card hands, they're both bad. <laughs> and suddenly the ga the game becomes so slow, you know, because of that. It's kind of funny. Yeah, very, very good point, this one. Well, two players uh, making Mulligan to five. And to remember, we have a Hayden Douglas tournament. And uh, at some point, will we show you and more meta info and archetypes info? Don't worry about it. Yeah, we don't have a meta game right yet, but I'm sure they will eventually yeah, have it. Yeah, at some point, will yeah. we will we show you? Yeah, this tournament just started. You know, this is the very first games, and we have here we have here again one zero. Yeah, they're 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 switch, but they're, we're following the action, right? Like hammers winning one zero, Mulligan to five. Tron is on the play on the left side. And I see a ring, I see a lot of non-lands, I will say you, this does not seem like a keep, right? It's, I don't see a oh. Tron land. I'm gonna give you, you a hint. If you, play, if, you play, if you play in Tron and you don't have Tron lands in your starting hand, that's not a good start. But you can't go to Mulligan to four. You can you can go to Mulligan to four. If you're gonna- but it's so, it's so hard. Have, no, he's keeping this one, right? He, he has a strings, I think. Well, if you have to pick up a deck, to choose a deck to go Mulligan to four, I can tell you Tron is, your deck. Because okay. Imagine you want to go to four with Tron <laughs> on the play, and you have Tower, Mine, Bow Plan, and Con the Great Creator. I don't need more cards. You're gonna beat most decks, including Hammer. Okay. With that hand, you know. Tron just... starter pack. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, if you want to go to four, you're gonna need like good hand, right? But if you want to go to four to that hand, that's all you need. It's like you know, <laughs> cash your card on three, get a Stunning Breach. They cannot attack you anymore. And uh, we see two keeps and. Stirring's trying to Stirrings, get the, yeah, yes. I mean, trying to get Tron lands usually like at this stage of the game. Uh, Javier, is Tron the best mm, the one ring deck on the for on the format? I will say so. I mean that's that's the you know the base you could use to actually pick Tron for the PT. Like we think I, I am confident it's right now the best ring deck. It's actually one of the reasons why the deck is good. And we're gonna see I mean we should probably see a little bit of relief from uh, the against side because Possession turn one means one, possession is out of the hand of Claudio, which is a very good removal, and also means there's nothing bad happening until turn four. Well, expert sentinel for uh, the hammer player, Urza Saga, very good card, by the way. Yeah, Saga, it's gonna be a little bit slow here compared to a turn one Saga, but Sigurd's all right. Aid. So let's say plus Saga, Whoa. we know what it does, right? Like turn f this means turn four, Dagan is pretty much threatening like a very big attack with Hammer. Uh, yeah. We don't know what's left on his hand though. Pierre was Mulligan to five, but this is a very good hand, by the way. Yeah, the thing is, that's it. Like Mulligan to five, we don't really know what's left. Like it could be two lands more, and he because you will keep with five, you will keep like two lands, Sentinel eight, Spring Drum. Like you have to. So it's it's also harder to to know what's on his hand based on the gameplay, of course. If we get yeah. to see the hand, it's better. But like seeing the game from the outside, if you're the opponent, for example, you don't really know. I mean, you know there's no hammer, right? Because if there was a hammer, uh, we'll be like, I ate hammer, attacked you for a million, right? So we know the game doesn't have another hammer, but we'll see, oh, that's a force of vigor end of turn. Force of vigor paying with a generous ant Wow. Whoa, we're blowing up that. So there's two creatures left. I mean, no, no creature left. Yeah, that's. Uh, I wasn't under the Force of Vigor. That's why he kept the hand. I, I didn't see that card, but that's definitely easily enough to justify a key. Mine. Oh. Mine off the top, right? For Cloud, that's a very good one. Yes. Now has one card. And Oblivious Stone. Yeah, Stone is very, very good, usually in this matchup, but again, has the needle, if I saw it correctly. Another Uth no, Uth Uth Saga. Not. Yeah, Saga. Okay. Well, big steps here for, for Claudia. If he gets the Tron. This is Tron. That is a Tron, right? Wow, wow this is Tron. No, the one Tron. ring. It's not Tron. No, it's no. not Tron. It's too much. No, no, mine. It's mine, too mine. Yeah. yeah, it's too much. Wow. They mismatch mine. Ooh. So, well, still, though, it's still good. Like, one ring makes it so, like, if um, if he finds a land, he can activate the Oblivion Stone. And that, that will actually change the game. One important thing, though, is if Claudia wants to use Oblivion Stone, to kill the tokens from Saga. He has to use it before the trigger resolves from Saga. Otherwise, Dagan can get the needle. And if once the needle comes into play with Saga, Claudio will not have priority to actually sacrifice a stone before the needle gets to name. Right? So the way you do it is after the token is put, you sacrifice a stone. Probably gonna see someone's crying here based on the tablet. Lance is tapping, it's crying into no explore. Explore. 
explore, draw a car, play a land. Yep. You can play another extra land, but that's he doesn't have any land, right? No he's land in hand of uh, Claudio. Actually, is crude. Wow, that that's he has no play, right? He just passed a turn. Yeah, just passed turn. He didn't draw land. He draw he draw the car the tor of the turn and draw Two the, the ring. car. Yeah, you do three cars. Okay, that's um, and miss a land drop. Yeah, well, that's a uh, dangerous. This is dramatic. This is dangerous because he could actually die here against hammer if if um pierre does a hammer the game's over right like he doesn't have an interaction i mean obviously pierre doesn't know claudio doesn't have a force of vigor we actually don't know for sure uh but the thing is here he is in big danger i mean so there's two lines for here for again it's hammer or needle needle and olive and stone needle needle okay, what's it is needle saying this uh, oblivion stone yep so hand is corn. Is it a chalice? I'm not sure. I think it's a ring, I a corn, and a chalice. Well, second ring is going to be great here. There, there was a world where naming ring was better, right? Because now he's going to take well, four, I think. And yes, four diamonds. Yeah, have so four uh, artifacts. It's not that bad for Claudia, right? Tablin and go ahead. Tap, Let's yeah. Take two to 12. You can do three cards, and three cards. Presumably, will let you like play another. That's a mine. That's another. Another, that's another mine. Another mine. Yeah, three mines. But like now, he can draw three cards. He can play another ring in his hand. That's the thing. Like against hammer, if you play a ring, you're guaranteed to survive one more turn, and that's a big deal because you can just play a ring and then you know start the change the the chain. Like you just play another ring, get some time walks, and eventually, hopefully, playing a bridge. That's a force of vigor now. I think. Well, another ring. Yeah. Digging uh, in the deck for drawing more cards. Yep, it's gonna be useful for for Claudio, but I mean the force of vigor should be enough to actually get some time, right? If you can force of vigor the the needle and the cigar the state or something, then you can crack the olive and stone and all all the um, the game we have left is just land, so well play mine yes. and uh, well thinking go ahead. Uh, Another, uh, well, now the pl throne player is safe because of the trigger of the of the ring, and one turn of the deploy of deploy for Pierre here. Play land, go ahead. That's yeah. That's all. Hammer can deploy. That's the thing. Like usually decks, like hammer, uh, like ring is not as good against um, mid range decks because. You play the ring to get a turn, but in this turn they can develop their game. Like if it's more tight, they're playing iterations or whatever. But Hammer usually cannot deploy anything. Like Hammer in the mid late game, they usually have nothing to do. They just pass a turn. That makes ring effectively a time walk. Well, this uh, pitting needle is destroyed, and uh, now um, the throne player can play can activate this uh, stone. Yeah, this should cleaning, be yeah. cleaning the cleaning the whole board, and yes. most likely, realistically, just winning the game in the process, right? The only thing he has to be worrying about is like the search of salvation. I think the permanents get, uh, but it's just like here, nothing can go very wrong for for the Tron player at this point. I feel, and that's that's counting. He doesn't get Tron, which seems like he's gonna be getting Tron now. You know, this map search for a um, power plant, and then with five mana with tower and power plant, you can just crack the Oblivion Stone, which is what he's going to go for it. Okay, cracking this map, looking for the land he needs. Power plant, and yes. that should be it, actually. Because that's five mana, that's crack the stone. We're probably going to see an upkeep crack the stone, most likely. Well, Tron. Yep. It's Very Tron crucial Tron. point for the deck. Yeah, I mean, this was fairly good hand for Tron, right? It was like Force of Vigor, and then turn four ring. I mean, that was, that was good enough, this game. It was not super close. I saw that again. I see that again having a Caldera complete in his hand, which is completely useless, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hammer rarely gets to seven mana. It, it's, I, I have played Hammer quite a bit, and it's very rare. I have cast it sometimes, but it doesn't happen often. And what's worse when you cast it? It's usually like not very useful. Well, the, the table is clean, no creatures for the Hammer player, and this is. Uh... The Almighty Ornithopter. Zero wow. two flying, zero mana. It's Whoa, a great deal. The light. <laughs> I can see with the light, but you, you were so fast. 
for this, you know, we could see for a second. <laughs> I think it's the old art, like the Antiquities art. The old art, yes, Antiquities. I think it is, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, but well, only after, as unlike as it is, you know, it has won plenty of tournaments. It, it's, you know, it's my mulligan. If you think how many tournaments only after has won, being a Zero 2, it's a lot. <laughs> Not only in the standard, like the modern, you know, like it has won tournaments across yeah, the years. Yeah, it's a classic card in Magic. It's a classic, very good card. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> and fly, fly is free. <laughs> Do you know what happened with the free spells? Exactly. Free spells are, are good. And if there are creatures, well, there aren't that many free creatures in Magic. It's like this and Midnight and the Zero Ones. And this one, you know, it's just a good card. At some point, some point of your Magic life, you realize Ornithopter is just a good Magic card. <laughs> Well, <laughs> the Tron player is floating mana at playing this um, Karn, the, cre the great creator, and looking for a very big artifact on the toolbox on the side. Yeah, it doesn't really matter that much what he gets. The game is basically over. I think the, the hand is just throwing dead in this position. <coughs> you can see Ballista. Walking Ballista. Yeah, that's enough to just clear the game. I, mean, I would not be surprised if we... Super big Walking Ballista. Yeah, four. Four, four. I guess there's like, and I don't think there's any outs the the hammer player can get. It was like one more turn probably. I don't know what's gonna be the next fetch from Karn. Definitely, Kala complete is the only thing he has to be concerned about. But it, you, you see, in Tron, when you have so much mana on a Karn, it doesn't really matter that much what you do. You just like have so much advantage that. Well, is this within a lethal already? Ballista has. The ability to deal damage equal to the counter. So if yes. once it gets to ten, it's lethal. Even if your opponent's a twenty life, you see a champ with this beautiful ornithopter. You see old art, <laughs> look for the edition. I know this yeah, <laughs> yeah, you was right. It was the old uh, art of the ornithopter and the inner and Inner's and coming from the middle earth, right? Literally from the middle earth, just so generous, getting food to to everyone. Yes, it's five seven, right? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, I don't know, Karn also has some... Big creatures. ...activation left. I'm going to see what he okay. does. Another arti he artifact go, he from the... the he could get the Titan, actually. Yes. He gets Sundering Titan to kill a planes, so that again doesn't cast the Kalda Complete. But I don't think it matters at all. That's Leveler. Okay, the Leveler from the, leveler. the Brothers War set. Yeah, it does, doesn't do anything because the opponent doesn't have permanent. Whoa. Just like an Look that table. Look that creatures, big creatures yep. in uh, Pierre. Uh, the, okay, okay, you won. Scoop it up. Yeah, was so hard. Let's go to the third play. Well, let's we'll see. Uh, we can expect uh, any change here on the draw, on the play for Tron or for Hammer, Javier. I think it's unlikely. Like, I think Tron sideboard is very straightforward in terms of, like, he wants removal, but you see the player checking, but I don't think there will be a huge change by any means. I honestly will not expect that many differences. I, I only expect the fact that Hammer can keep uh, way more hands. Like, now, if you're playing Hammer, all these hands that we saw before were, you know, if you have, like, a hand that's very good on turn three, for example, that's way easier to keep on the draw than on the I'm sorry on the play than on the draw. So I will expect Hammer to Mulligan a little bit less, and but Tron though will probably Mulligan similarly because you cannot do better than that, right? Like with Tron, you cannot be like, well, you know, I have to Mulligan into the nuts because I want I need to have a turn to kill or whatever. Like you just cannot. Like you're playing Tron, you're playing a turn three deck, you know. Okay, well, the production is working to try to figure they out are. to solve to solve the light problem. We want to show you all the cars so well. We want to can check all the games. So let us to make some uh, so, some <laughs> some that difficult. Well, Javier, we can uh, we, we are waiting for that. Will we see a uh, Tron and a Hammer the last game and uh, maybe a very sweet um, matchup before, and well, well, we see. Uh, I know all the people want to know about the new meta and the new decks. Uh, I expect we'll see we will see uh, more more type the decks, for example, Tron decks. And what do you know? What deck I 
uh, see uh, I saw yesterday? Well, I mean, there's a lot of different decks, of course, but I actually think Hammer might be one of the of the new decks we're gonna see in the matchup in the metagame. Sorry, like like Hammer was another deck that presumably it was fine for Cyborg against the Ragdos decks because it has anti fire in back in the Cyborg, but at the end of the day, it was still rough because they had answers to that card. So I think uh, if Mortite, you know, Mortite is a deck that could also have like a big time this week, like it could be good and popular. But that's also a fine matchup for Hammer. So I think Hammer does make a lot of sense as well for, for this new metagame. It's, it's, it's hard to tell because um, when it's a new metagame, you can only predict a little bit, but it's, you know, human, so we're often very wrong. I can be like, <laughs> you know, Hammer is not that good against Rhinos, but maybe Fury being out means, you know, like Rhinos has now, like there's still seconds Hammer and the such. And even, even if you know match matchup or how a deck fits in the metagame, Changes like Force of Vigor. We, we saw this game, right? We saw the Force of Vigor. Yes. It just was great. Like, so if, great. If Claudio didn't have Force of Vigor, Usa Saga would have got not only two tokens, but also like the hammer to kill the opponent, right? Like, it could be like, just uh, another game. And I think matchups like this, like, if you throw Force of Vigor in a deck, hammer gets worse. But so all the decks have some weak spots. And I think that's also very interesting in terms of like how metagame evolves. You know, all the decks. All the decks have cards that you str the struggle against. I guess Mortite, not as much, but Jab Moth, you have Curse Totem. You know, like, all the decks can suffer against a deck. Okay. So it's uh, it's it's going to be hard to, to see which one is best, but, you know. Okay, I, I want to ask you something. When you are preparing a tournament, how do you prepare this situation? Uh, uh, with a ban, with a big a change, how do you, do you prepare a new tournament, a new meta, how you can work with this, with this, and how can you uh, work on a new list, for example? Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, like, it's a whole different thing to prepare a tournament for a metagame that's established and for a new one. But we can maybe do this later because now the game is going to, but I think it's a good question. So we'll follow up, if you, that's okay, in a uh, later round. Uh, let's go back to the, we see Claudia making Hands. Okay, we assume that's a seven keep for Claudio. I'm not sure. They are definitely waiting. Players are waiting. They might be waiting for the technical things. Yes. Well, okay. While, while they start, I let's talk about I'm um, answer you or no. Not anymore. That's the uh, they're starting. So well, the play we is ready. Yes. We don't see how many cards. So that's a seven cards, six cards for it again, and I think six also for Claudio. All right. So that's six cards eight. Uh, hammer um, on the play for here in this situation so saga then again saga usually set up the turn for kill getting hammer but this turn two is gonna quite define the game right uh okay stone for mystic um i will assume there's no force of vigor in claudia's hand because oh it did is well there's something that could be done here by claudia is you can respond to the tra saga trigger in, if he does that, then there's no mana to be to be get. Uh, but he elected to wait. That's uh, takes a different road of the game. And now he has the map with two thrones. No, no land for Claudio. Oh, that's dangerous. Let's see. Um, so it's color complete, right? That's yes, it's color works. complete. All right. So we're gonna see color complete not being played here because might. Does destroy color okay, complete very well. Yes, Remember, might exiles, right? Might exile the complete. So I think Claudio is actually well protected here if he draws a land, but he has to draw a land. Well, the Tron player. That's classic Tron. Okay, that's a, you know, that's a blast zone. Yes, this, this is blast zone. That right? is a good card in against Hammer. I can tell you that. Yes, <laughs> you can you can destroy all the one uh, the one permanent. Like Hammer, for example. For example, like Ginger. Yeah, but uh, again, in hand, he has the Search of Salvation, which is actually good to protect permanents. And we'll see. He has, it gives Hexproof to the permanents, if I remember correctly. Um, well, this is going to be tricky. He's, realized, he's deciding whether to push the advantage here or not. Yeah, and that's attack. He's electing to not use a Mystic, right? Uh, because if he taps out, that's very dangerous for, for his his board. Okay. So forest for for Tron. That not, choosing it is not a lot of lands. Not Tron lands. Like Tron can actually work, especially if you have force of vigor and might. 
Yes. As a control deck. So he wants to disrupt the plan, survive, and then play ring or Karn. Because you don't really need Tron to beat a deck with a ring, right? And that's, that's the road he's choosing here. I actually think it's a very good line. here. I think Forest here is better than Tron because you know what two Tron do? Nothing, right? You have Tower of Mind, they just they give nothing, and green mana here is just like very useful for him. All right. Okay, Styrian's looking for a very good curse. Uh, you don't see that's the pla power plant. Power plant, yes. There's so many arts, different arts from Tron. It's you know sometimes <laughs> not this that the easy. Or yeah. The old arts. Yeah, those are the, the old original, arts. The original, the yeah. original arts. All right, uh, so we get a slowish hand for Tron, but the only issue here is now he's tapped out, but he's definitely not gonna feel like a lot of pressure. Like left totals are quite high anyway. And I don't know if Dagen has any answer in the hand to the ring, but something like Mana Tide will actually be huge. But the Sujo Salvation, even though it's great, uh, it doesn't really add that much to this board state. Okay, we see a trade. What do you think of yes. this? He traded the Sentinel the with, the, with the Well, Knight. Tell, tell us about the Esper Sentinel. Is uh, pressing the mana uh, of the Tron player, right? Yeah, it's like I feel like this blog is actually quite good. Uh, you know, like th this just changed the dynamic of the game because now uh, the game cannot punish the ring, you know, by drawing one more card. But also, wow, that's that's it. No more gas. Okay. Well, drawing land, drawing cards for this uh, one ring. Another turn for a turn player trying to not die against this run. Need to be fast. I thought I had seen the complete in the against hand, but that's clearly not the case because the, the search is, is there. And, um, well, I mean, this is not the game, right? The game two, like, this force of Igor just won the game. Because imagine the against hand, he went uh, Sigar the Sate, Ursa Saga, which threatens to be two creatures and the hammer for the kill. But the force of Igor just killed them both for no mana. Like, if I was if I was Claudio, I would, Claudio, I would be, like, very happy about playing force of Igor in my deck at this point, this match. I'm, like, it just... Single-handedly won game three and game two also. You know, like, it's just... I I feel like game like this game was almost over after the Force of Vigor singled how uh, the game drew afterwards. Well, this is Tron. Is this a mine? That's Tron, right? Yes. Yeah, that's full Tron. And another, the One Ring. That's one turn of mine. protection for uh, Tron. Yeah, and the Stone. And Stone. I mean, Needle has already been used. The, this... It's, well, you can see all the body language, you know, from the game, like, he's just like, yeah, this is just over. Not, you know, not conceding or anything, but he knows, he knows the game is slipping away, and it's, I think we're already, I think this turn is already just the no-return point, like, yes. seven cards in hand, Tron, Oblivion Stone, the One Ring, I don't think there's Well, sweet spot here, so, for the Tron player, drawing cards... And now he he needs to hit a Karn and a big spell and go to win the game. Yeah, I mean, but then as before, like, if you have this big spell, it doesn't really matter that much which one you get. It doesn't matter. As long as you keep yourself alive, you have to not die. If you don't die, the Tron deck will eventually win the game. And, you know, it's a wound call engine, a fairly large creature, and the game's over. Stay hands, and yeah. the game is over. It and Tron won this uh, round. Yeah, Tron takes a match. I will.